Hello again. So in the last video I talked about pacing strategy based on some event data of two ultra endurance athletes that I coach. And what we found is that they spend a lot of time over the endurance zone and as a consequence you could use that for your pacing strategy during events. If you haven't seen that video it's probably worth watching it before you watch this one because there's a bit more analysis of the data. In this video I want to talk about the training implications, although they don't change things a lot. It's just worth having this in mind and it does justify some of the training approaches that I've been talking about in previous videos. So the fact that it shows that athletes are able to spend a lot of time above the endurance zone burning carbohydrate basically means that it's worth training all training zones. It's not worth just doing lots of long steady riding to get better at, the, at your endurance training zone to get faster in your endurance training zone. It's worth training all your training zones, even the maximal aerobic, your VO2 max zone, when you're trying to improve your VO2 max. Obviously, it's important to do your endurance training as well to build up that uh, fat burning metabolism, improve your aerobic threshold as much as possible, because that's the basis of, your, uh, of what you need for longer ultra endurance events. It's also important to have a good nutritional and recovery strategy, because what you're trying to do is maintain those carbohydrate reserves as much as possible so that you can use them for the higher intensity efforts. Remember when we say high intensity, it's not like sprinting, it's not anaerobic type efforts, but they are using up carbohydrate reserves. It's also worth taking in some protein to make sure that you don't you minimize the amount of muscle damage because muscle damage is quite a bit quite a thing when you're doing ultra type uh, events perhaps more so in running but certainly it is a factor in cycling it's also obviously very important to do some actual event practice where you practice fueling and practice varying your pace to get ready for your event and you do more and more of this as you get closer to your event things get in all training periodization you go from things that are the least specific to the things that are the most specific to your event. Moving on to periodization, further from your event, it's a pretty good idea to use a polarized approach whereby you're trying to do these above FTP efforts to raise your FTP, your anaerobic, anaerobic threshold, your power at anaerobic threshold, and also do lots of low, end, low intensity endurance work where you're getting ready to be able to ride for the durations that you need to ride in your event and, um, and build that aerobic threshold, your fat burning metabolism and all those things, but also to include a few event practices because it's always better to not drop everything. It's better to include some elements of everything in all periods of your training. As you get closer to your event, it's a good idea to then start more race specific type training. So you might do more tempo efforts. You've cracked the amount of time that you, can, that you need to ride for. So you can ride for the duration of at least one day of your planned race routine which we've talked about in the past uh, but you get in something that's getting quite close to your event the variability that you need in your event so you might not be able to ride higher intensity lower intensity for the duration that you planned but you're starting to move towards that and practicing your fueling strategy during the uh, during those rides it's also really important to be thinking about your recovery so after you've done a, a ride particularly a long ride or a hard ride to think about your recovery strategy because during the brief periods, if you ride in a bike, a multi-day event, a bike packing event, the periods that you recover are not just a case of getting some sleep, it's really focus on getting the best recovery possible. So you can replenish your glycogen reserves and repair as much muscle damage as you, as you can so that you're in your best shape possible for when you start riding again the next day. So really focus on the small things because the small things can add up to big things. I've put a slide together with the, the different training zones and different training type things you might like to do and the influences I think they have. It's a work in progress, but I, you might find it useful and I'd, I'd love to find, hear your comments and if you've got any experiences that reinforce the ideas or are counter to the ideas, please make a comment and we can discuss it in the, uh, in the comments section. Or get in touch if you think I can help you formulate things in a bit more detail for your specific case. So in summary, it's shown that we need to work in all training zones, even improving your VO2 max. Train the least specific thing first. So go for a polarized approach early on and move towards the endurance type tempo strategy, but make sure you include elements of all your training zones and training types throughout your training period. And finally, develop an optimum nutrition and recovery strategy because that's basically free gains just by doing those things better you're not tiring yourself out you're actually improving your training and your event your performance in your events so getting that right is really important just spend some time thinking about that 
I hope you found this useful. Please like if you did and uh, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.